everybody. Welcome to the new season of Electric Couple. My name is TK and this series is about living and traveling in an electric vehicle. This is actually season number three. Um, I didn't video document the previous seasons, but you can read about it in my blog post. Uh, I'll post a link to it below in the uh, description section. Well, I'm not really living in my car full time, but I do travel for eight months a year and I come back home during the winter time. So why am I doing this? Well, for one thing, it's fun to be able to travel anywhere, anytime and explore. And I'll talk about this fan life aspect of it in some other video. But the main reason that I started doing this was because I have what's called MECFS. That's myalgic encephalomyelitis, uh, commonly known as chronic fatigue syndrome. <clears throat> and being on the road, brings me a physical relief from it for some reason. So it has become a um, form of physical therapy for me. I'll talk about as to what it might be and MECFS in general in some other video as well. I became ill with it back in 2008 uh, after overtraining in judo. I consider myself recover now, but I still suffer from what's called post-exertional sickness. If I jog for four blocks, for example, um, I get knocked out the next day for the whole afternoon, which is actually a huge improvement compared to how it used to be. Uh, I used to get knocked out for several days if I work just a little too fast for, for a few blocks. And back in the winter of 2009, I think, um, I was able to work uh, barely. But even the improvement is an honor disability, especially in the springtime during the pollen season when I become more vulnerable. And that's usually when I hit the road. But this year I'm starting out late because my car has been in the shop for several months. Yeah, I've been trashing my car left and right, uh, traveling from coast to coast for several years now. And I had to get it all fixed, finally. So on the first season, I was mostly car camping across the country from San Francisco to the New York City. On the second season, I was both car camping and backpacking in the mountains of Wyoming and Idaho. Uh, this season I'll be mostly backpacking in California and explore its mountains. I was going to start the season by backpacking 80 mile loop through Yosemite, but the plans got thwarted because the amount of snow we got last winter and the two Lummi Meadows, which was to be the starting point, is still closed. So uh, I instead backpacked 30 miles in West Yosemite from Hetch Hetchy to Espen Valley and then another 30 miles from Hetch Hetchy to Lake Vernon. Uh, I have another permit coming up in August so maybe I'll give the 80 mile loop another try then. But for now let's go to Hetch Hetchy and let's have some fun. There is something about being on the road that sets your mind free. And in my case, it frees my body too from the tyranny of MCFS. Free from it all, my brain wanders off to a real place, thinking the skipping how Mars used to look at one time, but now nobody's left to remember. All this on Earth will come to an end someday too, perhaps sooner than later, the way things are gone. But for now, I'm still here to see and feel.
I went to overthrew the evening and then pulled into an empty lot a few miles from Hatch Hatch entrance to spend the night. This is the thing about having a camper. It lets you go anywhere, anytime, without having to plan ahead of time. Not too much anyway. It's not about the money. Do you suddenly save money on lodging? It's more about freedom. I got up early next morning, hoping to pick up my permit the first thing in the morning and be at the trailhead before 8. Little did I know, they hand out the permit at 8 o'clock even though the station opens at 7. That gave me an hour of free time to go down to Evergreen Lodge a couple miles away and have my last civilized meal for the week. Now, say what you will about this civilization and the evil of it. We can't deny the convenience of it. I mean, where in the wilderness would you be able to sit down and someone would bring you a nice breakfast like this? The bears only won't do that for you. They will have you as a breakfast. The brown ones anyway. Nothing beats the civilization for the convenience and safety. But the problem mm. is that such a convenience and safety puts your brain on autopilot and you end up walking through life half asleep. I can't remember what I had for breakfast yesterday morning, though I'm pretty sure it's either cold cereal or pancake, just because they are the only two things I have in the morning besides coffee. There were so many times when I was committing to work, I couldn't remember how I got to my house. I remember leaving the office and arriving at home but everything between will be blank. So we need something new time to time to make us feel awake. At a little bit of danger, you will be alive and awake. Back at the mosquito infested entrance station, the ranger did a rest to talk me out of my plan to get to El Capitan following the Yosemite Creek. There are snows, there are waters, there are bears and tigers. Well, okay, maybe not tigers. We finally came to an agreement that I would continue as planned and then turn around if things get too dicey. Then I will come back and tell her all about it. And like that, my trekking in Yosemite started. I left my car on the roadside by the Smith Peak Trailhead and started hiking. The first mile or so to Smith Meadows was a steady climb through a series of switchbacks. It takes some stamina to climb, it's true. But I was also suffering from residual effect of the trip to Yosemite Valley five days before. It felt as if I was carrying extra 50 pounds on my back. Which gave me an idea. If you want to know what a mild MECFS patient feels like on his bad day, Try getting through the day with the 50 pounds on your back. You will give up on things very quickly. For a moderate case, try 100 pounds. Every test will feel insurmountable. 200 pounds for a severe one, you won't be able to get out of the bed with the weight pulling down on you. That's how some patients describe their bad days. It's like the gravity is 10 times stronger.
The trail from this point on was mostly burnt trees sticking up in the field of white thorns. After a while it began to feel rather drab. The aftermath of fire has its own beauty. But come on, this is supposed to be Yosemite. Where are the creeks and waterfalls? As soon as I said that, a creek came into view as I turned the corner. It was as good a place as any for a late afternoon snack. The large breakfast I had in the morning was enough to sustain me through the afternoon, so I skipped my lunch. I don't know what it is about the water, but it always makes me come alive. It excites me and calms me at the same time. I almost always drink water when I have a deep relaxing sleep. I must be a fish in my previous life, or maybe I evolved from a fish. Now that I'm refueled and rested, I figured I would make it to Harden Lake no problem. Well, I didn't make it that far. I was spent and when I came upon this cute little boat at about 4 mile mark, I decided to pitch the tent and call it a day. I know I'm suffering from the residuals of the previous exertion when my performance drops drastically like that. With the tent set up, I fixed noodle and brown rice for supper and then washed up in the booth. Then I retired for the night, hoping for a better day tomorrow. I wasn't pretty sure I would. It usually takes a day to get out of the funk from the previous exertion once I'm on the trail. I eventually fell asleep to the sound of the babbling brook. <laughs> 